Hi everybody, I'm Jeff from PhotoWalk Pro and this is part two of my HDR tutorial. Uh, in this session we're going to cover tone mapping in Photomatix. Now a lot of times uh, people will hear the term HDR and they think of an image that looks kind of like this with uh, the halos and the really funky colors and almost a neon look. Um, while I think, you know, that's kind of cool in some circumstances, uh, this is more the look that I go for when I process an HDR, which is much more of a realistic view with good definition of my shadows and highlights. And we're going to work on getting this effect um, in our file that we created in the last tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to Photomatix. And let me go ahead and open up that file. I'm going to go down here and hit open. And I'm already in that folder, so I'm going to click car.hdr. And that's the HDR file that we created using Photoshop. And Photomatix will read that HDR file. So here's the, the, what would I would say, the raw HDR file right here. And you can see the viewer is trying to show you what it would look like if you corrected it. And we're going to go ahead and do some tone mapping to this. Now tone mapping is actually mapping tonal ranges and colors back into a 24-bit space from the 32-bit um, HDR image. All right, so we have this open here, and you can see my image right here. Now this has some corrections already applied to it from my previous one. Uh, the previous HDR that I processed. What I'm going to do is go ahead and click the defaults. So I like to start from a kind of a zeroed out point. Uh, it doesn't take everything to zero, but it, it starts with the Photomatix defaults, and that's where I like to begin everything. All right, the strength, this actually covers the, uh, the local contrast enhancements, and you can go from a zero strength up to 100%. I usually leave mine at 70. I don't make any changes to that until maybe later on in the process I'll come back and tweak it if necessary. The color saturation, I always move up. I move that up to about 80% to start with. I may move it back down a little bit later on, but I always start with it high and then work my way back down. Okay, light smoothing. This is the important one. Right here, this is where you get those halos to start popping up. And as you move down to a medium or a low, um, you can start really seeing these halos right here, and you start getting that <laughs> kind of, I call it the clown colors. Uh, it really starts going nuts. And then, okay, you go to the very low. I've never used that one before. That one, I think my computer would explode if I actually tried to use that one. Um, in general, I work in the medium to the to the high range. And the high to very high is going to give you the most realistic look to your image. So generally, I'll start with that on high and then work it down later on if I can. Now, the luminosity is actually going to expand your tonal range in your image and I kind of equate this to the um, the fill slider in camera raw and as I move it to the right you'll see that it kind of opens up the shadow areas or tries to and tries to expand that tonal range a little bit. Generally I work with this from the zero point which is your midpoint on the slider and into the negative range. So I'm going to put this down maybe around minus five, minus four, let's try minus five. Um, and let's see what that looks like, and that's pretty good. So I'm going to start from that point. Um, you do have a histogram in the middle here. It doesn't do anything. You can't slide on there or anything like you can in Photoshop or Lightroom, but what you can do is keep an eye on your, your right side and your left side to make sure you're not clipping any shadows and highlights. All right, let's move down to these adjustments down here. Now the first adjustment panel is the tone panel, and that's where you set your white point and your black point. And I'm going to tell you right now, generally I put my white point up about midway, and I pop my black point up about midway, and I just start kind of moving them to get the look that I want. I may take the blacks down a little bit. I may take it over to the right a little bit more and see if it looks good darker. Um, that right about there, that's pretty good. Uh, the gamma just gives you a global lightening or darkening, and, and so you can adjust it if you want to. I usually leave that alone. If I'm going to do that, I'll pretty much always do that in Photoshop anyway. All right, let's go up to the next adjustment panel here, and that's color. Now, color is going to let you either warm your image or cool your image. If you go to the right, it's going to make your image a little bit more on the yellow, yellow warm side. Uh, on the left, it's going to give you that cooler bluish look. Um, I'm going to take this just a little bit to the left. Maybe it was a minus one, and that looks pretty good to me. Uh, there are sliders for your saturation um, highlights and your shadows, and you can increase those, and I generally do just because I like a nice saturated look, and it doesn't overdo it. Now, you notice when I went to the color saturation at the top before, it looked a little bit too much, but as I've added some, some uh, black points to this and raised those up, um, you can see that it really kind of pulls those colors back down to a normal level. 
All right, let's move on to the next panel here, and that's the micro panel. Now, the micro contrast kind of works on those areas where um, it's it's really hard to explain. It's it's kind of a local detail, so it's kind of doing a contrast adjustment to maybe those midtones and those local uh, the the smaller detail areas. And I usually pop that up almost to the, the far right, and I, it usually does a really nice job for me. Um, let's try nine, and that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to leave it there. All right, micro smoothing uh, generally kind of helps take a little of the, um, the the graininess or the noise out of your image. HDRs, when you create them, they create a lot of noise. I'm not sure why it actually has that effect, but it pulls a lot of noise into the image. So if you have that going on, you might want to go ahead and pull down that micro smoothing just a little bit, and it will clean some of that up for you. All right, and this last panel right here is our shadow and highlight smoothing. Now, what this will do is actually uh, kind of smooth out some of those contrast enhancements uh, and take them down. Now, you can see in here in the sky, I've got some banding because it's it's uh, just a little too much contrast between these, these colored uh, bands right here. So what I can do is I can take that highlight smoothing, and as I move it up, you kind of have to let go of it to see it. But you can see, okay, a little bit smoother in there. I'm almost all the way. Let me move it a little bit more and see what happens. And that's nice. Now I've got a nice smooth transition from these yellows up to these blues up here. And that's a really nice look. Um, the shadow smoothing, I'm going to put it all the way up here just to see. Uh, it didn't really do a whole lot for me. Kind of muddy. When you move the shadow smoothing up, it kind of muddies up your, your shadows. It kind of makes them look a little blocky, a little flat. And I like to keep that down. The shadow clipping, um, it says it controls the clipping of the shadows. Well, uh, Usually I don't really want my shadows clipped too much. There is an occasion where I'll put this up high, but sometimes I find it actually puts some little black areas in there where you didn't want them, where you wanted some just some darker areas. So I kind of most often keep that down low. And guess what? We've gone through all the sliders. Um, I may come up here and make a slight luminosity adjustment um, in the end, but that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click the process button. Now the, the process, what we've done is we've done changes to the image, but not really um, applied them to the image. This is all just a, a preview of what will happen when you actually apply these. So now it is processing that, and you can see the status bar down here is going to move over to the right as it's done, uh, and applying all these changes to the HDR image. Uh, the larger the image file, obviously the larger uh, the amount of time it's going to take to process that image and give us a file to work with. Now the last step in this process is to save that file into a format that can be opened up and worked with a little bit more easily in Photoshop. While you can do a couple of things uh, with an HDR file in Photoshop, it's not to the point where it's going to be really uh, that useful to you. So we're going to save this out as a basically a TIFF, but we could also save it out as a JPEG if we want to. So I'm going to go up here and hit File save as and here's my little dialog box there's my new name car underscore tone mapped it automatically adds the tone map uh, this is the folder the HDR images and then these are my choices I've got an 8-bit TIFF 16-bit uh, TIFF and a JPEG in the older version 2.5 which is still the current version for Windows you have a PNG instead of an 8-bit TIFF um, I'm gonna go ahead and select the 16-bit TIFF because you know what when I work with this in Photoshop I want as much information as possible I'm going to click on save and there you can see it has a dot tiff extension now this is actually now saved in my folder here and let me go ahead and go back to my bridge and I'll show you that here is our image now it doesn't look great it doesn't look like the first one I showed you which is this one but you know what? I'm going to take this into Photoshop do some curves and do some sharpening and it'll look really nice when it's done alright that's my workflow that's how I process HDRs I'm going to do another one on single image processes coming up uh, in the next week or so. So come back, check often, and I hope this was useful. Uh, you know where to find me. Uh, I'm at photowalkpro.com. Have a good day.